back and I've got a really fun experiment for you today and one my students really enjoy and what we're going to be using is a large slinky spring. So you've probably all seen slinkies before or got them for Christmas and probably tangled them within about five minutes and found them absolutely impossible to untangle. Well, today we're not going to walk them down a staircase. This one doesn't do it very well because it's a sort of double or even triple length slinky. We're going to send some waves down it instead. So, instead of sending the slinky down some stairs, I've got it stretched out along the floor of the lab. And we're going to give it a shake and see what happens. So the first experiment I always like to do with students is to just send one pulse to the far end of the slinky and see what happens. So here goes. So let's try that again and notice what happens to the pulse which I move to this side of the slinky. See how it comes back. So you should have noticed a couple of things there. Firstly, the pulse goes down with a positive peak and when it reflects off the hard surface at the far end, it comes back as a negative peak. I always think this is quite a nice way to show why words turn around in a mirror. You sort of get an inversion and here you're seeing an inversion of the pulse. Secondly, the floor absorbs some energy from the spring and so the oscillation dies down in amplitude. In other words, it doesn't go up and down forever. There's no perpetual motion here. I never cease to be amazed by the number of students who haven't seen these kind of slinky experiments. There are times when I could be accused of getting the slinky out in nearly every lesson and demonstrating some bit of physics with it. But what we'll do now is look at what happens when we send waves down it of different frequencies. So, here goes for some low frequency waves going down the slinky. And the main thing you notice there is if we have a low frequency, we have a very, very long wavelength. You might remember that frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. So as the frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. So now let's send some high frequency waves down the slinky and see what happens to the wavelength. So you'll notice with the high frequency waves, the wavelength is much, much shorter. Now there's some other things we can demonstrate too. One of them is the fact that waves carry energy. And this wave doesn't carry much energy. And this one carries a lot of energy. The energy is embedded in the amplitude of the wave. Let's now look at the speed that the pulses go down the slinky. So I'm going to send a high frequency pulse down first. And the one my students really struggle with is what happens if we send a low frequency pulse down. High frequency. and low frequency. Now it's quite difficult to see, but in fact, both of those pulses go down the slinky at the same velocity. The velocity is controlled by the slinky itself, not by the frequency of the movement of my hand. And that's rather counterintuitive. So if frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength, some of you might know the wave equation, V velocity equals F lambda frequency times wavelength. So multiply frequency by wavelength and you get the same number. So in other words, a high frequency pulse and a low frequency pulse go down with the same velocity because they have different frequencies and different wavelengths. But let's see if we can demonstrate all three things together, the frequency, the amplitude and the wavelength. So a common thing to do next is just to produce a wave like this and to say, look, High frequency, short wavelength, low amplitude. Long wavelength, low frequency, and I've chosen to do a high amplitude, one with lots of energy. Now let's try something a little bit more unusual. 
I'm going to send a positive pulse down the slinky and as soon as it reflects off the far end I'm going to send another positive pulse and see what happens when they meet in the middle. Happens very quickly so let's try it once again. Now this is really rather odd and needs to be seen in slow motion but if you think about it a positive pulse goes down it reflects negatively and meets another positive pulse and where they meet they actually cancel out. This is the beginning of how noise cancelling works or noise cancelling headphones. You add a positive sound to a negative sound. Let's just try that once more. So just where they overlap the amplitude becomes zero. But what happens if I send waves down the slinky and keep sending those waves and they meet head on with all the waves that are reflecting back? If I get this right you get quite an interesting effect. The effect you're seeing here is called a standing wave. If you look carefully there are bits of the slinky that are not moving at all and other bits that are moving with maximum amplitude. And this is caused by the addition of two waves, those from my hand and those that reflect from the far end. So all the waves I've demonstrated today are transverse waves, where the vibration is at 90 degrees to the direction the wave energy travels. That's like water waves, um, which you'll be familiar with. And it's important to note that the slinky basically stays where it is. It's the wave energy that travels along. But when I speak to you, I'm using longitudinal waves. And with longitudinal waves, I'm moving the air backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards towards the camera microphone. So it's the same as pushing and pulling on the slinky spring. The pulses are not very clear, but you've got high pressure and low pressure pulses traveling down the slinky. And that's how a sound wave works. But remember, the slinky basically stays where it is, the air stays where it is, it just oscillates about a fixed point. And just before we finish, the one thing that always happens, one of my students lets go of the slinky and releases the elastic potential energy in it. So, I hope you enjoyed the slinky wave experiments and perhaps learnt a little bit of physics. Another video next week, I look forward to seeing you again next time.